Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. Today is our Abundantly Blessed series. It is the part of the week that we are reading God's Word together. Why are we reading this book? What, what is the point of this book? Because this book has a lot of wisdom, it has a lot of instruction, and it has a lot of uh, for us to learn to know more about God, right? You want to grow closer to a person, what do you do? You spend time with them, right? You get to know them, you talk to them right here. God's written word is a great way to learn more about God. So we are in the Old Testament and we are in Ezekiel. So I'm um, reading from the ESV, English Standard Version. Read whatever version you would like. That's just what I'm going to read from. And we are in chapter 19. So it's a lament for the princes of Israel. And you take up a lamentation for the princes of Israel and say, What was your mother? A lioness? Among lions she crouched. In the midst of young lions she reared her cubs. As she brought up one of her cubs, he became a young lion. And he learned to catch prey. He devoured men. The nations heard about him, and he was caught in the pit. And they brought him with hooks to the land of Egypt. When she saw that she waited in vain, that her hope was lost, she took another of her cubs and made him a young lion. He prowled among the lions, he became a young lion, and he learned to catch prey. He devoured men and seized their widows. He laid waste their cities, and the land was appalled in all who were in it. At the sound of his roaring, then the nations set against him from provinces on every side. They spread their net over him. He was taken in their pit. With hooks they put him in a cage and brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him into custody, that his voice should no more be heard on the mountains of Israel. Your mother was like a vine in a vineyard, planted by the water, fruitful and full of branches, by reason of abundant water. Its strong stems became rulers' scepters. It towered aloft among the thick boughs. It was seen in its heights with the mass of its branches. But the vine was plucked up in fury, cast down to the ground. The east wind dried up its fruit. They were stripped off and withered. As for its strong stem, fire consumed it. Now it is planted in the wilderness in a dry and thirsty land, and fire has gone out from the stems of its shoots, has consumed its fruits, so that there remains in it no strong stem, no scepter for ruling. This is a lamentation and has become a lamentation. Chapter 20, Israel's continuing rebellion. In the seventh year, in the fifth month, on the tenth day of the month, certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, speak to the elders of Israel and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, is it to inquire of me that you come? As I live, declares the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Will you judge them, son of man? Will you judge them? Let them know the abomination of their fathers and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, on the day when I chose Israel, I swore to the offspring of the house of Jacob, making myself known to them. In the land of Egypt, I swore to them, saying, I am the Lord your God. On that day I swore to them that I would bring them out of the land of Egypt into a land that I'd search out for them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most glorious of all lands. And I said to them, Cast away the detestable things your eyes feast on, every one of you, and do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me and were not willing to listen to me. None of them cast away the detestable things their eyes feast on, nor did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I would pour out my wrath upon them and spend my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I acted for the sake of my name, that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations among whom they lived, in whose sight I made myself known to them in bringing them out of the land of Egypt. So I led them out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. I gave them my statutes and made known to them my rules, by rules, by which which if a person does them, he shall live. Moreover, I gave them my Sabbath as a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not walk in my statutes, but rejected my rules, by which if a person does them, he shall live. And my Sabbath they greatly profaned. Then I said I would pour out my wrath upon them in the wilderness to make a full end of them, but I acted for the sake of my name that if they should not be profane in the sight of the nations, in whose sight I had brought them out. Moreover, I swore to them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land that I had given them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most glorious of all lands, because they rejected my rules and did not walk in my statues and profane my Sabbaths, for their hearts went after their idols. Nevertheless, my eyes spared them, and I did not destroy them or make a full end of them in the wilderness. And I said to their children in the wilderness, Do not walk in the statues of your father, nor keep their rules. 
nor defile yourself with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules and keep my Sabbaths holy that they may be a sign between me and you that you may know that I am the Lord your God. But the children rebelled against me. They did not walk in my statutes and were not careful to obey my rules by which if a person does them, he shall live. They profaned my Sabbath. Then I said I would pour out my wrath upon them and spend my anger against them in the wilderness. But I withheld my hand and acted for the sake of, the, of my name that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations in whose sight I had brought them out. Moreover, I swore to them in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the nations and disperse them through the countries because they had not obeyed my rules but have rejected my statutes and profaned my Sabbath and their eyes were set on their father's idols. Moreover, I gave them statutes that were good, not good and rules by which they could not have life. And I defied them through their very gifts and the offering of all of their firstborn, that I might devastate them. And I did it that they might know that I am the Lord. Therefore, son of man, speak to the house of Israel and say to them, thus says the Lord God, in, the, in this also your fathers blasphemed me by dealing treacherously with me. For when I had brought them into the land that I swore to give them, then whenever they saw any high hill or any leafy tree, there they offered their sacrifices and they presented the provocation of their offerings. There they sent up their pleasing aromas and there they poured out their drink offerings. I said to them, what is the high place to which you go? So its name is called Bama to this day. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, will you defile yourselves after the manner of your fathers and go whoring after their detestable things? When you present your gifts and offer up your children in fire, you defile yourselves and with all your idols to this day. And I shall be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, declares the Lord God, I will not be inquired by you. What is in your mind shall happen, shall never happen. The thought, let us like the nations, let us be like the nations, like the tribes of the countries, and worship wood and stone. The Lord will restore Israel. As I live, declares the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and outstretched arm and with wrath poured out, I will be king over you. I will bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you are scattered with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm and with wrath poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the peoples and there I will enter into judgment with you face to face. As I entered into judgment with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so I will enter into judgment with you, declares the Lord God. I will make you pass under the rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. I will purge out the rebels from among you and those who transgress against me. I will bring them out of the land where they sowed but they shall not enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, go serve every one of you his idols now and hereafter. If you will not listen to me, but my holy name, you shall no more profane with your gifts and your idols. For on my holy mountain, the mountain height of Israel, declares the Lord God, there all the house of Israel, all of them shall serve me in the land. There I will accept them and there I will require your contributions and the choices of your gifts with all your sac sacred offerings. As a pleasing aroma, I will accept you. When I bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you have been scattered and I will manifest my holiness among you in the sight of the nations and you shall know that I am the Lord which when I bring you out into the land of Israel the country that I swore to give to your fathers and there you shall remember your ways and all your deeds with which you have defiled yourselves and you shall loathe yourselves for all the evils that you have committed and you shall know that I am the Lord when I deal with you for my name's sakes not according to your evil ways nor according to your corrupt deeds O house of Israel declares the Lord God and the word of the Lord came to me son of man set your face toward the south land preach against the south and prophesy against the forest land in the Negev say to the forest of Negev hear the word of the Lord thus says the Lord God behold I will kindle a fire in you and it shall devour every green tree in you and every dry tree the blazing flame shall not be quenched and all faces from south to north shall be scorched by it all flesh shall see that I am the Lord have kindled it it shall not be quenched then I said all oh Lord God they are saying of me is he not a maker of parables 21 the Lord has drawn his sword the word of the Lord came to me son of man set your face against towards Jerusalem and preach against the sanctuaries prophesy against the land of Israel and say to the land of Israel 
Thus says the Lord, behold, I'm against you and will draw my sword from its sheath and I will cut off from you both righteous and wicked because I will cut off from you both righteous and wicked. Therefore, my sword shall be drawn from its sheath against all flesh from south to north and all flesh shall know that I am the Lord. I have drawn my sword from its sheath. It shall not be sheathed again. As for you, son of man, groan with breaking heart and bitter grief, groan before their eyes. And when they say to you, why do you groan? You shall say, because of the news that it is coming, every heart will melt and all hands will be feeble. Every spirit will faint and all knees will be weak as water. Behold, it is coming. It will be fulfilled, declares the Lord God. And the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophecy, prophesy and say, thus says the Lord, a sword, a sword is sharpened and also polished, sharpened for slaughter, polished to flash like lightning. Or shall we rejoice? You've despised the rod, my son, with everything of wood. So the sword is given to be polished, that it may be grasped in the hands. It is sharpened and polished to be given to the hand of the slayer. Cry out and wail, son of man, for it is against my people. It is against all the princes of Israel. They are delivered over to the sword with my people. Strike therefore upon your thigh, for it will not be a testing. What could it do if you despise the rod, declares the Lord God. As for you, son of man, prophesy. Clap your hands and let, let the sword come down twice, yes, three times. The sword for those to be slain. It is the sword for the great slaughter which surrounds them, that their hearts may melt and many stumble. At all their gates I have given the glittering sword. Ah, oh, it is made like lightning. It is taken up for slaughter. Cut sharply to the right. Set your face yourself to the left. Wherever your face is directed, I also will clap my hands and I will satisfy my fury. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord came to me again. As for you, son of man, mark two ways for the sword of the king of Babylon to come. Both of them shall come from the same land. And make a signpost, make it to the head of the way of the city. Mark a way for the sword to come to Rabbah of the Ammonites, and to Judah and to Jerusalem the fortified. For the king of Babylon stands at the parting of the way, at the head of the two ways, to use divination. He shakes the arrows, he consults the teraphim. He looks at the liver. Into his right hand comes a divination for Jerusalem, to set battering rams, to open the mouths with murder, to lift up the voice with shouting, to set battering rams against the gates, to cast up mounds to build siege towers but to them it will seem like a false divination they have swarmed solemn oaths but he brings their guilt to remembrance that they may be taken therefore thus says the lord god because you have made your guilt to be remembered and that your transgressions are uncovered so that in all your deeds your sins appear because you have come to remembrance you shall be taken in hand and you O profane wicked one prince of israel whose day has come the day of your final punishment thus says the lord god remove the turban and take off the crown things shall not remain as they are exalt that which is low and bring low that which is exalted a ruin 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 i will make it this also shall not be until he comes the one to whom judgment belongs that i will give it to him and you son of man prophesy and say thus says the lord god concerning the ammonites and concerning their reproach say a sword a sword is drawn for the slaughter it is polished to consume and to flash like lightning while they see for your false visions while they divine lies for you to place you on the next of the profane wicked whose day has come the time of their final punishment return it to its sheath in the place where you were created in the land of your origin i will judge you and I will pour out my indignation upon you. I will blow upon you with the fire of my wrath, and I will deliver you into the hands of brutish men, skillful to destroy. You shall be fuel for the fire. Your blood shall be in the midst of the land. You shall be more remembered, for I, the Lord, have spoken. You shall be no more remembered. <laughs> 22 Israel shedding of blood and the word of the Lord came to me saying and you son of man will you judge will you judge the bloody city then declare to her all her abominations you shall say thus says the Lord God a city that sheds blood in her midst so that her time may come and that make idols to defile herself you have become guilty by the blood that you have shed and defiled by the idols that you have made and you have brought your days near the appointed time of your years have come therefore I have made you a reproach to the nations and a mockery to all the countries those who are near and those who are far from you will mock you your name is defiled and you are full of tumult behold the princes of Israel in you every one according to his power have been bent on shedding blood father and mother mother are treated with contempt in you the sojourner suffers extortion in your midst the fatherless and the widow are wronged in you you have despised my holy things and profaned my sabbaths there are men in you who slander to shed blood and people in you who eat on the mountains they commit lewdness in your midst 
In you, men uncover their father's nakedness. In you, they violate women who are unclean in their menstrual impurity. One commits abomination with his neighbor's wife. Another lewdly defiles his daughter-in-law. Another in you violates his sister, his father's daughter. In you, they take bribes to shed blood. You take interest and profit and make gain of your neighbors by extortion. But me you have forgotten, declares the Lord God. Behold, I strike my hand at the dishonest gain that you have made and at the blood that have been in your midst. Can you, your courage endure or can your hands be strong? In the days that I shall deal with you, I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. I will scatter you among the nations and disperse you through the countries and I will consume your uncleanness out of you and you shall be profaned by your own doing in the sight of the nations and you shall know that I am the Lord and your, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, the house of Israel has become dross to me. All of them are bronze and tin and iron and lead in the furnaces they are dross of silver therefore thus says the lord god because you have all become dross therefore behold i will gather you to the midst of jerusalem as one gathers silver and bronze and iron and lead and tin into a furnace to blow the fire on it in order to melt it so i will gather you in my anger and in my wrath and i will put you in and melt you i will gather you and blow on you with the fire of my wrath and you shall be melted in the midst of it as silver is melted in a furnace so you shall be melted in the midst of it and you shall know that i am the lord i poured out my wrath upon you and the word of the lord came to me son of man say to her you are a lamb that is not cleansed or rained upon in the day of indignation the conspiracy of her prophets in her midst is like a roaring lion's tearing the prey they have devoured human lives they have taken treasure and precious things that have made many window, widows in her midst. Her priests have done violence to my law and have profaned my holy things. They have made no distinction between the holy and the common, neither have they taught the difference between the unclean and the clean, and they have disregarded my Sabbath, so that I am profaned among them. Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing the prey, shedding blood, destroying lives to get dishonest gain, and her prophets have smeared whitewash for them, seen false visions and divining lies for them, saying, Thus says the Lord God, when the Lord has not spoken. The people of the land have practiced extortion and committed robbery. They have oppressed the poor and needy and have exhorted from the sojourner without justice. And I sought for a man among them who would build up the wall and stand in the breach before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Therefore, I have poured out my indignation upon them and I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. I have declared their way upon their heads, declares the Lord God. A whole, how do you say that? A hola and ola, a holia. This is always hard to do. 23. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man. There were two women, the daughters of one mother. They placed, they played the whore in Egypt. They played the whore in their youth. There their breasts were pressed and their virgin bosoms handled. I'm going to say, oh, Ahola was the name of the elder and Aholiba, the name of her sister. They became mine and they bore sons and daughters. Ohola played the whore while she was mine, and she lusted after her lovers, the Assyrian warriors, clothed in purple, governors and commanders, all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding on horses. She bestowed her whoring upon them, the choicest men of Assyria, all of them, and she defiled herself with all the idols of everyone after whom she lusted. She did not give up her whoring that she had begun in Egypt, for in her youth men had lain with her and handled her virgin bosom and poured out their whoring lust upon her. Therefore, I delivered her into the hands of her lovers, into the hands of the Assyrians, after whom she lusted. These uncovered her nakedness, they seized her sons and her daughters, and as for her, they killed her with the sword, and she became a byword among women when judgment had been executed on her. Her sister saw this, and she became more corrupt than her sister in her lust and in her whoring, which was worse than of her sister. She lusted after Syrian governors and commanders, warriors clothed in full armor, horsemen riding on horses, all of them desirable young men. And I saw that she was defiled. They both took the same way. But she carried her whoring further. She saw men portrayed on the wall, the images the Chaldeans portrayed in Vermilion, wearing belts on their waist with flowing, flowing turbans on their heads, all of them hanging the appearance of officers, a likeness of Babylonians, whose native land was Chaldea. When she saw them, she lusted after them and sent messengers to them in Chaldea. And the Babylonians came to her into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their whoring lust. After she was defiled by them, she turned from them in disgust. When she carried on her whoring so openly and flaunted her nakedness, I turned in disgust from her, as I turned in disgust from her sister. Yet she increased her whoring, remembering the days of her youth when she played the whore in the land of Egypt, and lusted after her lovers there, whose members were like these of donkeys, and whose issue was like that of horses. Thus you longed for the lewdness of your youth when the Egyptians handled your bosom and pressed your young breast. Therefore, O oh, a holy bath. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will stir up against you your lovers from whom you turn in disgust, and I will bring them against you from every side. 
So all the people and, and the desirable young men, the governors and all of that, and they shall come against you from the north with chariots and wagons and a host of people. They shall set themselves against you on every side with buckler, shield, and helmet. I will commit the judgment to them, and they shall judge you according to your their judgments. And I will direct my jealousy against you that you may deal with you in fury. They shall cut off your nose and your ears, and your survivors shall fall by the sword. They shall seize your sons and your daughters, and your survivors shall be devoured by fire. They shall also strip you of your clothes and take away your beautiful jewels. Thus I will put an end to your lewdness and your whoring be God in the land of Egypt so that you shall not lift up your eyes to them or remember Egypt anymore. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will deliver you into the hands of those whom you hate into the hands of those from whom you've turned in disgust. And they shall deal with you in hatred and take away all the fruit of your labor and leave you naked and bare and the nakedness of your whoring shall be uncovered. Your lewdness and your whoring have brought this upon you because you played the whore with the nations and defiled yourself with their idols. You have gone the way of your sister, therefore I will give her cup into your hands. Thus says the Lord God. You shall drink your sister's cup that is deep and large. You shall be laughed at and held in derision. For it contains much. You will be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, a cup of horror and desolation. The cup of your sister's Samaria. You shall drink it and drain it out, and gnaw its shards and tear your breast. For I have spoken, declares the Lord God. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have forgotten me and cast me behind your back, you yourself must bear the consequence of your lewdness and whoring. The Lord said to me, Son of man, will you judge them, declare to them their abomination? For they have committed adultery and blood is on their hands. With their idols they have committed adultery and have even offered up to them for food the children of whom they had borne to me. Moreover, this they have done to me. They have defiled my sanctuary on the same day and profaned my Sabbath. For when they had slaughtered their children sacrificed to their idols, on the same day they came into my sanctuary to profane it. And behold, this is what they did in my house. They even sent for men to come from afar, to whom a messenger was sent. And behold, they came. For them you bathed yourself, painted your eyes, and adorned yourself with ornaments. You sat on a stately couch with a table spread before it, on which you had placed my incense and my oil. The sound of a carefree multitude was with her, and with the men of the common sort, drunkards, were brought from the wilderness. They put bracelets on the hands of the women and beautiful crowns on their heads. That I said of her who was worn out by adultery, now they will continue to use her for a whore, even her. For they have gone into her as men go into a prostitute. Thus they went into a holy, a holo and holaba, lewd women. But righteous men shall pass judgment on them with the sentence of adulterers and with the sentence of women who shed blood because they are adulterers and blood is on their hands. For thus says the Lord God, bring up a vast host against them and make them an object of terror and plunder. And the host shall stone them and cut them down with their swords. They shall kill their sons and daughters and burn up their houses. Thus will I put an end to lewdness in the land that all women may take warning and not commit lewdness as you have done. And you shall return your lewdness upon you. You shall bear the penalty for your sinful idolatry and you shall know that I am the Lord God. 24, the siege of Jerusalem. In the ninth year, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, write down the name of this day, this very day. The king of Babylon has laid siege to Jerusalem and utter a parable to the rebellious house and say to them, Set on the pot, set it on, pour in water also, put in it the pieces of meat, all the good pieces, the thigh and the shoulder, fill it with choice bones. Take the choicest one of the flock, pile the logs under it and boil it well. Seethe also its bones in it. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city, to the pot whose corrosion is in it, and whose corrosion has not gone out of it. Take out of it piece after piece without making any choice. For the blood she has shed is in her midst. She put it on bare rock. She did not pour it out into the ground to cover it with dust. To rouse my wrath, take vengeance. I have set on the bare rock the blood she has shed, that it may not be covered. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Woe to the bloody city, I also will make a the pile great. Heap on the logs, kindle the fire, boil the meat well, mix in the spices and let the bones be burned up. Then set it empty upon the coals that it may become hot and its copper may burn, that its uncleanness may be melted in, its corrosion consumed. She has wearied herself with toil, its abundant corrosion does not go out of it, into the fire with which with its corrosion. On account of your unclean lewdness, because I would have cleansed you and you were not cleansed from your uncleanness, you shall not be cleansed any more till I have satisfied my fury upon you. I am the Lord and I have spoken. It will come to pass and I will do it. I will not go back. I will not spare. I will not relent. According to your ways and your deeds, you will be judged, declares the Lord God. Ezekiel's wife dies. The word Lord came to me, son of man, behold, I'm about to take delight 
of your eyes away from you at a stroke. Yet you shall not mourn or weep, nor shall your tears run drop down. Sigh, but not aloud. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind on your turban and put your shoes on your feet. Do not cover your lips, nor eat the bread of man. So I spoke to the people in the morning, and at evening my wife died. And the next day I did as I was commanded. And the people said to me, Will you not tell us what these things mean for us, that you are acting thus? Then I said to them, The word of the Lord came to me. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the pride of your de power, the delight of your eyes, and the yearning of your soul, and your sons and your daughters whom you left behind shall fall by the sword. And you shall do as I have done. You shall not cover your lips, nor eat the bread of men. Your turban shall be on your heads, and your shoes on your feet. You shall not mourn or weep, but you shall rot away in your iniquities, ye and groan to one another. Thus shall Ezekiel be to you a sign, according to all that he has done, you shall do. With, when this comes, then you will know that I am the Lord God. As for you, son of man, surely on the days when I take from them their strongholds, their joy, and their glory, the delight of their eyes and their souls desired, also their sons and daughters, on that day a fugitive will come to you to report to you the news. On that day your mouth will be opened to the fugitive, and you shall speak and be no longer mute. So you will be assigned to them, and you will know that I am the Lord God. Prophecy against Ammon, 25. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face toward the Ammonites and prophesy against them. Say to the Ammonites, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, because you said, Aha, over my sanctuary when it was profaned, and over the land of Egypt when it was made desolate, and over the house of Judah when they went into exile. Therefore, behold, I am handing you over to the people of Egypt for a possession, and they shall set their encampments among you and make their dwellings in your midst. They shall eat your fruit, and they shall drink your milk. I will make Rabbah a pasture for camels, and Ammon a fold for flocks. Then you will know that I am the Lord, for thus says the Lord God, because you have clapped your hands and stamped your feet and rejoiced with all the malice within your soul against the land of Egypt. Therefore, behold, I have stretched out my hand against Against you, and I will hand you over to the plunder to the nations, and I will cut you off from the peoples and make you perish out of the countries. I will destroy you, and then you will know that I am God. Then you will know, then you will know, then you will know that I am God. Prophecy against Moab and Seir. Thus says the Lord, because Moab and Seir behold the house of Judah is like all the other nations, therefore I will lay open the flank of Moab from the cities. And I will give it along with the Ammonites to the people of the east as a possession. That the Ammonites may be remembered no more among the nations, and I will execute judgment upon Moab. Then you will know. Prophecy against Edom. Because Edom acted revengefully against the house of Judah and has grievously offended in taking vengeance, the Lord God said, I will stretch out my hand against Edom and cut off from it man and beast, and I will make it desolate. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, and they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my wrath. And you shall know my vengeance, declares the Lord. Prophecy against Philistia. Thus says the Lord God, because the Philistines acted revengefully and took vengeance with malice of soul to destroy a never-ending enmity, therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I will stretch out my hand against the Philistines, and I will cut off them off and destroy the rest of the sea coast. I will execute great vengeance on them with wrathful rebukes. Then they will know that I am the Lord, then when I lay my vengeance upon them. Prophecy against Tyre. In the eleventh month, son of man, um, came to Tyre and he said, Aha, the gates of the people is broken. It is swung open to me. I shall be replenished now that it, she has laid waste. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Tyre, and bring up many nations against you as the sea brings up its waves. They shall destroy the walls of Tyre and break down her towers and I will scrape her soil from her and make her a bare rock. She shall be in the midst of the sea, a place for the spreading of nets, for I have spoken, declares the Lord God, and she shall become a plunder for the nations and her daughters on the mainland shall be killed by the sword. Then they will know that I am the Lord God. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will bring against Tyre from the north Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the king of kings, with horses and chariots and horsemen. He will kill with the sword your daughters on the mainland. He will set up a siege wall against you and throw up a mound against you and will raise a roof of shields against you. He will direct the shock of its battering ram against your walls, and with axes he will break down your towers. His horses will be so many that their dust will cover you. Your walls will shake at the noise of the horsemen and wagons and chariots when he enters your gates. As men enter the city that has been breached, with the hoof of his horses he will trample over your streets. He will kill your people with the sword, and your mighty pillar will fall to the ground. They will plunder your riches and loot your merchandise. They will break down your walls and destroy your pleasant houses. Your stones and timber and soil they will cast in the midst of the water, and I will stop the music of your songs. The sound of your lyres shall be heard no more. I will break, break, make you a bare rock. You shall be a place for the spreading of your nets. You shall never be rebuilt, for I am the Lord. I have spoken, declares the Lord God. 
Thus says the Lord God to Tyra, Will not the coastline shake at the sound of your fall? When the wounded groan, when slaughter is made in your midst, then all the princes of the sea will step down from the thrones and remove their robes and strip off their embroidered garments. They will clothe themselves with trembling. They will sit on the ground and tremble every moment and be appalled. And they will raise a lamentation over you and say, How you have perished, you who are inhabited from the seas, O city renowned, who is mighty on the sea. She and her inhabitants impose their terror. And all her inhabitants, now the coastlands tremble on the day of your fall. And the coastlands are on the sea and dismayed at your passing. For thus says the Lord God, when I make you a city laid waste like the cities that are not inhabited, when I bring up the deep over you and the great waters cover you, then I will make you go down with them who go down to the pit, to the people of old, and I will make you dwell in the world below, among ruins from of old, with those who go down to the pit so that you will not be inhabited, but I will set beauty in the land of the living, and I will bring you to a dreadful end, and you shall be no more." Though you will be sought for you, you will never be found again, declares the Lord. A lament for Tyre. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, raise a lamentation. And this is the one he's going to say, O Tyre, you have said, I am perfect in beauty. Your borders are in the heart of the seas. Your builders made perfect your beauty. They made all your planks of fir trees. They took a cedar from Lebanon to make a mass for you, O oaks of Bashan. They made your oars, they made your decks of pines, a fine embroidered linens from Egypt was your sail serving as your banner. The blue and purple from the coast, the inhabitants of Sidon and Arvad were your rowers, your skilled men, O Tyre, were in you. They were your pilots. The elders of Gabel and her skilled men were in you, caulking your seams. All the ships of the sea with their mar mariners were in you to barter for your waves. Persia and Lud and Put were in your army as your men of war. They hung the shield and helmet in you. They gave you splendor. Men of Arvid and Helek were on your walls all around, and men of Gamed were in your towers. They hung their shields on your walls all around, and they made perfect your beauty. Beauty. Tarshish did business with you because of your great wealth of every kind. Javan, Tibul, and Meshech traded with you. They exchanged human beings and vessels of bronze for your merchandise. Um, they exchanged horses, war horses, and mules for your wares. The men traded. It goes through all the different things that they traded. They, Damascus did business with you. Um, all the wine, all the things that they did. Um, 26, your rowers have brought you out into the high seas. The east wind has wrecked you in the heart of the seas. Your riches, your wares, your merchandise, your mariners and your pilots, your caulkers, your dealers and merchandise, and all your men of war who are in you. With all your crew that is in your midst, sink into the heart of the seas on the day of your fall. So it doesn't really matter, it's all gone. At the sound of the cry of your pilots, the countryside shakes and down from their ships come all the handles all who handle the oar, the mariners and all the pilots of the sea stand on the land and shout aloud over you and cry out bitterly. They cast dust on their heads and wallow in ashes. They make themselves bald for you and put sackcloth on their waist and they weep over you in bitterness of soul with bitter mourning. In their wailing they raise a lamentation for you and lament over you. Who is like Tyre, like one destroyed in the midst of the sea? When your wares came from the seas, you satisfied many people with your abundant wealth and merchandise. You enriched the kings of the earth. Now you are wrecked by the seas and the depths of the waters. Your merchandise and all your crew in your midst have sunk with you. All the inhabitants of the coastlands are appalled at you, and the hair of your, their kings bristle with horror. Their faces are convulsed. The merchant among the people hiss at you, and you have come to a dreadful end, and shall be no more forever. 28. Prophecy against the Prince of Tyre. The word Lord came to me and said, Because your heart is proud and you have said, I am God, I sit in the seat of the gods in the heart of the seas, yet you are but a man and no God, though you make your heart like the heart of a God. You are indeed wiser than Daniel. No secret is hidden from you. By your wisdom and your understanding, you have made wealth for yourself and have gathered gold and silver into your treasures. But by your great wisdom and your trade, you have increased your wealth and your heart has become proud in your wealth. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you make your heart like the hearts of a God, therefore, behold, I will bring foreigners upon you, the most ruthless of the nations, and they shall draw their sword against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor. They shall thrust you down into the pit and you shall die the death of the slain. In the heart of the seas, will you still say, I am a God in the presence of those who kill you, though you are but a man and no God. In the hands of those who slay you, you shall, not, you shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of a foreigners. For I have spoken, declares the Lord God. A layman over the king of Tyre. Moreover, the word of the Lord came, and he said, You were the signet of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. Sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, emerald, and carbuncle, and crafted in gold were your settings and your engravings. 
he was. On the day that you were created, they were prepared. You were anointed guardian cherub. I placed you, you were on the holy mountain of God, in the midst of the stones of fire you walked. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till unrighteousness was found in you. In the abundance of your trade, you, filled, you were filled with violence in your midst and you sinned. So I cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God and destroyed you, O garden cherub. From the midst of the stones of fire, your heart was proud because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I exposed you before kings to feast their eyes on you. By the multitude of your iniquities in the unrighteousness of your trade, you profaned your sanctuaries. So I brought fire out from your midst. It consumed you, and I turned you to ashes on the earth. In the sight of all who saw you, all who know you among the peoples are appalled at you. You have come to a dreadful end and shall be no more forever prophecy against Sidon. The word of the Lord came to him and he said, Behold, I am against you, O Sidon. I will manifest my glory in your midst and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I execute judgment in her, her and manifest my holiness in her, for I will send pestilence into her and blood into her streets and the slain shall fall in her midst by the sword that is against her on every side. Then they will know that I am the Lord. And for the house of Israel, there shall be no more a briar to prick or a thorn to hurt them among all their neighbors who have treated them with contempt. Then they will know that I am the Lord God. Israel is gathered in security. Thus says the Lord God, when I gather the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they are scattered and manifest my holiness in them, in the sight of the nations, then they shall dwell in their own land that I gave to my servant Jacob, and they shall dwell securely in it. And they shall build houses and plant vineyards, and they shall dwell securely. When I execute judgment upon all their neighbors who have treated them with contempt, then they will know that I am the Lord their God. I think we're going to stop right there very fitting for the times that we're in right now. So lots of good prophecy that we're reading about things in the Old Testament. It's just God just pouring out that warning like, hey, look at this is what's going to happen. So you know that I am the Lord, your God. That's why we're reading God's word here. So we know what the Lord God is, what he wants us to do, what his plan is for us. That's why it's important that we read. So let's pray and then you guys can go about your day. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this time to come together and read your word, Lord Jesus. And we're just praying right now for peace, Lord, for your peace to reign upon everyone listening, Lord Jesus. We know you're not a forceful God and you're not going to force people to do things, Lord, but you give it willingly. You give it as a gift and say, here, take it. But we have to be people of action, people that will take things from you, Lord Jesus. Let us take that peace so it can rest upon our lives. So we're just praying, Lord, for peace, peace to rule in all our lives, Lord Jesus. We're praying for wisdom, wisdom to know what to do, Lord. Let that Holy Spirit inside of us be so loud that we listen and hear and do what it tells us to do so that we don't miss it, Lord. I don't want to be a person that misses anything. I want to get it. I want to get to know you, Lord, moment by moment and do exactly what you have for me in my life, Lord Jesus. Let us follow after you and keep our focus on you moment by moment. Everything that we do, do it unto the glory of the Lord and to seek your face in everything, Lord Jesus. And we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Don't mind Ruby barking. She's after a bear or something down there. Who knows? So you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And I will see you guys again on Monday for another video. If you need a church, you can go check out my church, Upward Christian Fellowship. They have a great online service. I am there worshiping with you. We can worship the Lord God together. Great place to be. So, all right. We'll see you. Bye.